if we sort of rewind back and look at the the thing where we could say something a little bit more comfortably at five years and 10 years out, mm-hmm. you've uh, written about jobs mm-hmm. and uh, the impact on sort of our economy and the jobs in, in terms of artificial intelligence that might it might have. It's a fascinating question, what kind of jobs are safe, what kind of jobs are not? Mm-hmm. Can you maybe speak to your intuition about how we should think about AI changing the landscape of work? Sure, absolutely. Well, this is a really important question because I think we're very far from artificial general intelligence, which is AI that can just do the full breadth of what humans can do. But we do have human level or superhuman level narrow intelligence, narrow artificial intelligence. Um, and you know, obviously my calculator can do math a lot better than I can. And there's a lot of other things that machines can do better than I can. So which is which? We actually set out to address that question um, with Tom Mitchell. I wrote a uh, paper called What Can Machine Learning Do? that was in science. And it, we went and interviewed a whole bunch of AI experts and kind of synthesized what they thought machine learning was good at and wasn't good at. And uh, we came up with what we called a, a rubric, uh, basically a set of questions you can ask about any task that will tell you whether it's likely to score high or low on uh, suitability for machine learning. And then we've applied that to a bunch of tasks in the economy. Um, in fact, there's a data set of all the tasks in the U.S. economy, believe it or not, it's called ONET. Um, the U.S. government put it together, part of the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And they divide the economy into about 970 occupations, like mm-hmm. you know, bus driver, economist, primary school teacher, radiologist. And then for each one of them, it, it, they describe which tasks need to be done. Mm. Like for radiologists, there are 27 distinct tasks. So we went through all those tasks to see whether or not a machine could do them. And what we found, interestingly, was- Brilliant study, by the way. That's thank, so awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so what we found was that there was no occupation in our data set where machine learning just ran the table and did everything. And there was almost no occupation where machine learning didn't have like a significant ability to do things. Like take radiology. A lot of people, I hear it saying, you know, it's the end of radiology. And one of the 27 tasks is read medical images. Really important one, like it's kind of a core job. And machines have- basically gotten as good or better than radiologists. There's just an article in uh, Nature last week, but you know they've been publishing them for the past few years um, showing that uh, um, machine learning can do as well as humans on many kinds of diagnostic imaging tasks. Um, but other things that radiologists do, you know, they sometimes administer conscious sedation. Uh, they sometimes do physical exams. They have to synthesize the results and explain to, to the other uh, uh, doctors or to the patients. In all those categories, machine learning isn't really up to snuff yet. So that job, we're going to see some, a lot of restructuring. Um, parts of the job, they'll hand over to machines. Others, humans will do more of. And that's been more or less the pattern in all of them. So you know, to oversimplify a bit, we're going to see a lot of restructuring, uh, reorganization of work. And it's real going to be a great time. It is a great time for smart entrepreneurs and managers to, to do that reinvention of work. I'm not going to see mass unemployment. To get more specifically to your question, the kinds of tasks that machines tend to be good at are a lot of routine problem solving, mapping uh, inputs X into outputs Y. If you have a lot of data on the in- Xs and the Ys, the inputs and the outputs, you can do that kind of mapping and find the relationships. They tend to not be very good at, for even now, fine motor control and dexterity, um, emotional intelligence and, and human interactions, um, and thinking outside the box, creative work. If you give it a well-structured task, machines can be very good at it, but even asking the right questions, that's hard. There's a quote that uh, Andrew McAfee and I use in our book, Second Machine Age. Um, Apparently, uh, Pablo Picasso was shown an early computer and he came away kind of unimpressed. He goes, well, I don't see what all the fuss is. All that does is answer questions. (laughs) And to him, the interesting thing was asking the questions. Yeah. Try to replace uh, me, GPT-3, I uh, <laughs> dare you. Although some people think I'm a robot. You have this cool plot that shows, um, <laughs> I just remember where economists land, it, uh, where I think mm. the x-axis is the income. Yes. And then the y-axis is, I guess, aggregating the information of how replaceable the job is. Or I think I there's think an index. suitability for machine learning index. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So we have all 970 occupations Such on a that cool chart. cool plot. <laughs> and there's... 
scatters and all, you know, all four corners have some occupations, but there is a definite pattern, which is the lower wage occupations tend to have more tasks that are suitable for machine learning, like cashiers. I mean, anyone who's gone to a supermarket or CVS knows that, you know, they not only read barcodes, but they can recognize, you know, an apple and an orange and, and yeah. um, a lot of things that cashiers, humans used to be needed for. Um, at the end of this other end of the spectrum, there are some jobs like uh, airline pilot that are among the highest paid in our economy, but also a lot of them are suitable for machine learning. A lot of those tasks are. Um, and then, yeah, you mentioned economists. I couldn't help peeking at those and, and they're paid a fair amount, maybe not as much as some of us think they should be, <laughs> but, um, but they, uh, 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 have some tasks that are suitable for machine learning, but for now, at least most of the tasks that economists do are, didn't end up being in that category. And I should say, I didn't like create that data. We just took the, <laughs> took the analysis and that's, right. that's what's, it, what came out of it. And over time, that scatter plot will be updated as, uh, as, as the technology improves. But um, it, it was just interesting to see the pattern there. And it, it is a little troubling insofar as if you just take the technology as it is today, it's likely to uh, worsen income inequality on a lot of dimensions.